My name is Jan Šefranek. I work at Red Hat, and I am six storage uh, tech lead upstream, and also I am a team lead of a small uh, team in storage uh, in Red Hat that manages OpenShift storage. So I wear many hats, uh, partly upstream, partly downstream. And I will talk here about a recent feature that we have been working on uh, in upstream, uh, where we are removing code from Kubernetes and moving in somewhere else. And hopefully, without nobody noticing, if we did our work right. Uh, here down, you can find the link to the slides if you, f if you find it useful. There are a couple of commands that you may need. So uh, before I start, uh, let me show you a brief intro into Kubernetes history. It's long. In July 2015, we released uh, Kubernetes 1.0. I was there. I have my code there. Uh, and uh, our storage story there was uh, called Volume Plugins. We had 10 of them. The name would suggest that they are plugins. You can plug them in. You can plug them out in runtime. But that's false. They are hard-coded in Kubernetes uh, GitHub repository. You can't link them dynamically. So anybody wants to guess how many volume plugins we had uh, two years later in September 2017? Any number? Nobody, come on. Uh, how many volume plugins we had in 2017? We had 10 in 2015, so how many we had in 2017? 18, close. 20, 25, we got 27. So in two years, we got 17 new volume plugins for various storage backends, clouds, bare metal, uh, software-defined storage, anything. And we knew that we can't go further. We want something that is pluggable in runtime, and we don't want to maintain in the Kubernetes. So first attempt was were flex volumes. They were kind of clunky, both on the Kubernetes side and on the storage provider side. And in late 2017, we introduced container storage interface as alpha. And that was our future for storage in Kubernetes. As a carrot on a stick, so we lure everybody to use CSI. We implemented, we started implementing the new features like snapshots, like cloning, whatever, only as in CSI. So if you want snapshots, you must use CSI. Entry volume plugins will never get snapshot support. Uh, CSI got extremely, uh, extremely popular. Uh, yesterday I did the numbers. I found 100, 140 CSI drivers that I know about. I'm pretty sure there are many other drivers that are proprietary, and I don't know about, so oh, 140 drivers. And uh, as we developed the CSI drivers for the clouds and storage backends that we knew, uh, we ended up with the entry volume plugin that had some features, and the CSI driver that has the same features plus the new features. And we ended up with two codes that we needed to maintain. And uh, early in 2018, we decided we want to get off the entry code. The same uh, applies to entry cloud providers. Uh, again, we don't want to maintain entry cloud providers and external cloud providers, so entry must go away. Uh, that was 2018. In November 2018, we had alpha of CSI migration of the first volume plugins. And here we are, three and a half years later, the CSI migration is GA for Azure Disk and OpenStick Cinder in Kubernetes 124. That means there is no entry calls involved in these two volume plugins if you have Kubernetes 124. So it took us, took us a three and four uh, three and a half years to get there. So what actually is CSI migration? I already said we are moving code. We are not moving your data. The state data stays where it is. We are not changing the API. The API object stays exactly the same. So if you have a 
Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster with uh, entry volume plugins, entry volume PVs, storage classes, stateful set, daemon sets, everything. Uh, and you upgrade to a version where CSI migration is GA, nothing changes. You still have the same objects, the same PVs, same storage classes. Just under the hood, we are directing all the storage calls to the CSI drivers, and they talk to the CSI, uh, to the, they talk to the storage backend. So in theory, nobody should ever notice that there is any CSI migration happening, right? Uh, we did our homework upstream, we did the test, CI, everything. The same with OpenShift, uh, test, CI, everything, and we, will support it, so we got your covered. But on the other hand, uh, I am a software engineer, and it makes me kind of uncomfortable to throw away, uh, here is an example of uh, Amazon Cloud Provider and the volume plugin. We are throwing away 17,000 lines of code, including comments, including unit tests, that is tested to death. It runs in production for many years. Everybody knows how it behaves. Everybody knows it's corner cases. And we are replacing it with some other code in the CSI drivers. The CSI drivers, they are running in production today. Again, pretty well tested. We know how it behaves. Uh, just the translation between the entry volume plugin and the CSI driver, it's not really well tested. Like, we did test it, definitely, uh, in our environment, but uh, we know that many customers are crazy or maybe inventive. They use Kubernetes and OpenShift in a way that nobody would have ever imagined. So if you are one of these crazy users, please test CSI migration. And second thing is that CSI migration is a huge feature. So in OpenShift, it is disabled by default when it's beta in Kubernetes. And it will get enabled by default only when it gets GA upstream. That means, uh, if you know Kubernetes upstream, when a feature gets GA there, it is enabled and you can't disable it. So if, it, if the CSI migration is broken and you upgrade to a version where it is GA, uh, you can't turn back. You can't turn it off. It's too late. You have a broken cluster. So. That's why I am here actually with this lightning talk. I want to encourage everybody to test it while it's tech preview in OpenShift. You can enable tech preview features uh, very easily. You edit uh, one CR that we call feature gate. Uh, you add the last line, uh, feature set tech preview no upgrade. It will enable all tech preview features in your cluster, including CSI migration, including all the other tech preview features. Uh, but there is a catch. Uh, the no upgrade suffix means that you can't upgrade, upgrade that, that cluster. So please don't do that in production. Uh, this is for CI, for testing, for your lab environments. So you can try new features in OpenShift before they get GA, before you upgrade your clusters. Uh, when you enable Tech Preview no, no upgrade features, uh, it will uh, enable like the feature gates in Kubernetes, and when it's doing this, it will drain uh, your cube. It will drain your nodes and will restart the kubelets. So it will take some time. If you have, if you have big cluster, this will take some time. In small clusters, it takes I don't know five ten minutes. Uh, here is a timeline. Uh, what we do in both in upstream and in OpenShift, and in the middle, there is a column uh, when you can start testing CSI migration in OpenShift. So as I've said, uh, Azure Disk and Cinder are GA in Kubernetes 124. In OpenShift 411, it will be GA very, very soon. So please hurry with your tests if you are using one of those. Uh, AWS. Uh, Amazon Cloud, GC Cl Google Cloud, and Azure File will follow next in the next release, Kubernetes 125, OpenShift 412, and the last will be vSphere uh, in the next release, in the following release. So the timeline is pretty tight. Uh, it's really the best time to start testing before it's too late, uh, and let us know how it works. 
uh, this uh, schedule is kind of optimistic. This is just the current upstream plan for the future releases. We have shifted the GA uh, graduation a couple of times already, but I think right now it is the right, it looks like it's going really to happen. And of course, uh, please read release notes. Uh, for example, for vSphere, uh, we are deprecating support for old vSphere versions, and Kubernetes 1, uh, sorry, OpenShift 4.13 will most probably require version 7.0.2, which is the current vSphere version. So if, if you have anything on 6.7 or 7.0.0, uh, start thinking about upgrades. Uh, here, is, here are a couple of recommendations that I, with my upstream head, I would recommend everybody. If you, if you are starting new clusters uh, and you have a CSI driver available there, which is GA, then please forget about entry plugins. Use CSI exclusively. Uh, you will not exercise this CSI translation, CSI migration layer and our lives and your lives could be uh, simpler. If you have existing cluster with existing volumes, entry volumes, uh, and you have the possibility to move to CSI, please move to CSI. I know it's often, well, in most cases it's not possible because you need to back up all the data and restore them somewhere else. So, but if you have the chance, please start using CSI and in both cases, forget that entry ever existed. If you have uh, existing cluster with entry volumes uh, and you can't move them away, we are here for you. Uh, we have this CSI migration exactly for you. So your cluster will work after, should work after upgrades and uh, we will support uh, the, this entry PVs, entry storage classes in foreseeable future, which is very short this time, but. Uh, we are not planning to removing the support of these entry PVs, entry storage classes. You can use them. Just you will exercise one additional layer that could bring complications. And it, life is better without that layer. And again, I encourage everybody, please, please test CSI migration before you upgrade to a version when it's GA. So, uh, as a summary, I already told you, we are not changing the data. We are not moving the data. We are not changing the API. You can use the API as it is. You can use the existing PVs, existing storage classes, but please help us with the testing. And for repetition, uh, here is the schedule. And I will be around if you have any questions about storage or CSI, uh, I can answer anything. Okay, thank you very much.